Hi guys, welcome back. In today's Rhino tutorial, I'm gonna show you this conceptual project by Nudes Architect called the Biori Towers. It's basically the cellular tower where they're all stacked up on each other and they kind of twist, right? And so to do this one, what we're gonna do is actually use the history command in Rhino along with polar array and I'll show you how to use blocks so that you can adjust and edit the entire tower just by editing one of its cells. If you wanna follow along with this video, you can use the link in the description box below to download the files. If this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell so you don't miss any future videos. All right, let's get started. So when I saw this project on Instagram, I thought, you know, this lends itself very much to like a grasshopper project, but I thought, you know, it'd be fun and challenging to see if we can do this actually just using Rhino. So this is like a conceptual project. This is a, a rendering here, but you can see that there are these cells and they kind of rotate around, right? They're pointing in different directions and they actually get closer together here and they're kind of further apart here. Uh, we're not going to do it like that. We're just going to make them all evenly spaced and just see if we can even approach this form just using Rhino. So I'm going to show you a command today that a lot of people don't use, which is the history command. I'll show you how that works. So if I was starting a rectangle and I chose one of the center rectangle options, this one here, and I say the center is zero, which is the origin, and I just make a rectangle. I'm not worrying about the size right now because we can always scale the final product. So let's say I do this and if I copied this, over, right? So now there's a copy and I rotate this. Obviously, this one's not going to move, right? This is just going to stay the same. But what if I did that with record history? So if I click record history and then I type in copy, copy this object over, now it remembers the origin, right? Or, or the original uh, geometry. So if I rotate this, it will rotate this one as well. So that's something we want to be able to use for this project. So let's see, I'm going to start with the, a circle, again, the circle at the origin, so zero, and maybe it's about this big, right? Dimension really doesn't matter. And this time, again, I'm going to use record history to copy this rectangle from its center. So make sure that center is checked from its center to the end over here. So again, now if I rotate this, it's going to uh, rotate this one. But uh, look here, if you guys are using the gumball, always make sure the gumball, especially if you're just working with rectangles, is aligned to the object. Okay, and in this case, I do want the gumball not to be here because if I start rotating, it's going to rotate from this corner. I want it to rotate from the center. So I'm going to move the gumball location. So I'll say relocate to the center. Oh, sorry. And... There we go. Okay, so now it's now it's gonna rotate from the center, so that's awesome. And the next thing I'm gonna do is use a polar array to make sure I make multiple copies of this all the way around. So again, just type in array, and you'll see a bunch of options here. I'm gonna choose array polar. Select the objects as this curve, hit enter when you're done, and then what's the center of the array? Well, it's the, again, this is the origin, so zero. And then it asks how many items. Now, if you're ever doing something in a circle, it's always a good idea to have it as a multiple of 16, or sorry, a multiple of four. So 16 is a multiple of four, and let's see what that looks like. Again, the angle is 360, and this is, you know, the preview. So if we don't like this, we can, of course, change this to, say, go one up, change that to 20, or go down, change it to 12, but I think 16 is pretty good, so I'm gonna leave it at 16. And now this is where it's really useful to have the record history on and I oh man I don't remember if I actually did record history nope I did not so let me do that again first click record history then type in the command so array polar select the object select the center of the array which is zero number of items 16 and 360 and then hit enter now if I rotate the original it will rotate its copy over here. And since the array was based on the copy, it rotates everything else. So now this is really useful because now I can actually go ahead and either mess with the scaling of this uh, geometry and just get it to where it's just right for me. You know, maybe it needs to be just a little bit more. Soon you should be able to, you know, just get to that perfect form that you need. 
Okay, so there, there. Let's say this, like I'm happy with this arrangement. If I go into my perspective view, this is essentially the geometries that I'm gonna be using to make the tower. So let's go ahead and select what we just created. And the easiest way to do that is to just type in select last. So S-E-L-L-A-S-T, right? That'll select the last created objects. I'm gonna control click this one because I don't need this and just turn this into a group, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and extrude this. So extrude this up just a little bit, not too much. You know, and again, the scale really doesn't matter. We can always scale this later. And I can group this as well. So select last and group this. All right, now what I'm going to do is, if you notice in that image here, you see they're almost like repeating themselves one over the other. So it's really two layers that are just being copied over each other. So I'm going to take this layer, and since it's a group, it makes it much easier, and just copy it vertically so that it just sits one on top of the other. Now I'm going to rotate this so that they're alternating, right? So how do I know how much to rotate? Well, if I open up a uh, calculator here, 360 over 16, which is how many units we have, is 22 and a half degrees. So I need to go half of 22 and a half degrees. So click this and rotate it by 22 and a half over two, like this. And you can, yeah, and yes, you are allowed to do some math in here. So that's really useful. So go ahead, rotate that. Oh, I don't think I actually did that. There we go, hit enter. And now this is what we get, this result. So the last thing really that's left is just to array this in the vertical direction. So go ahead, select both of these and just do a regular array, okay? In the X1, Y1, um, and in the Z, I have it at 20. 20 seems, let's see if 20 seems okay, all right? And what's the spacing? So from the bottom of this to the top of this, let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that seems pretty all right. And there we go, right? So I can go into a rendered view if I like, start looking at these geometries. And this is essentially how we use the history command to be able to make this form, right? Now, I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna go rewind a little bit and I'm gonna do the exact same thing except using blocks. Okay, so hold on one moment. So over here, since I like this configuration, I'm gonna delete pretty much everything except for the original two and the circle. And I'm gonna run the array command again, except first I'm gonna make this a block. So I'm gonna type in the word block. Okay, select a point, doesn't matter. And I'm gonna call this base cuboid. So click okay. And now record history and do the same thing again, except do this as a block. All right, so now I've done the exact same thing, except now these are all blocks, so I could double click one, go into the block, and extrude it. And if I click OK, it should do that to all the other blocks, like that, right? Same thing, I can take these blocks now, copy them vertically, and I can rotate the bottom one this time and it broke history, which uh, maybe I'll just do the top one. Hold on, so take the top ones, rotate. And again, now we're just gonna do the same array like we did last time in the vertical direction. Array X1, Y1, Z20, that's fine. And get the spacing in there. And there we go, we have the exact same tower, except now they're all consisting of blocks, which is useful because I can go into one block and edit it like this. All right, so I've edited this block. If I hit OK, it should update all the other blocks. So now if I type show, you see it's edited all the others and this is how really you can use the history command using blocks and array to make this tower. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up and make sure that you download any files using the link in the description box below and I'll see you guys next time.